All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and happy Monday to you. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 17th of February. Telecom operators Bharti Airtel, Vodafone Idea and Tata Teleservices are likely to make payments for adjusted gross revenue dues today to avoid stringent punitive action from the telecom department, according to official sources. That's a PTI report. On Friday, after the Supreme Court ruling, the Department of Telecommunications ordered companies, including Bharti Airtel and Vodafone Idea, to clear AGR dues before midnight. Bharti Airtel, for one, offered to pay just 10,000 crore rupees out of the over 35,000 crore that it owes by the 20th of February. The PTI quoted an official as saying that the telecom companies would make payments today and the Department of Telecom would take action after evaluating the amount paid. Meanwhile, state-owned Oil India is likely to move the Telecom Disputes Settlement and Appellate Tribunal this week against the Telecom Department seeking about 48,500 crore rupees in past dues on the surplus bandwidth capacity it had leased to third parties, according to its chairman and managing director Sushil Chandra Mishra. In other news, an interministerial group has approved the terms for the privatization of Bharat Petroleum. And after approval is received from a small group of ministers, the expression of interest and preliminary information memorandum, which are necessary precursors to any deal, will likely be floated this month itself. Things seem to be going from bad to worse in the power sector. The total outstanding dues owed by power distribution firms to power producers rose further in December, reflecting stress in the sector. Discoms owed 88,177 crore rupees in December, up from just under 60,000 crore about a year back. The Department of Economic Affairs had apparently raised red flags over the likely collapse of infrastructure leasing and financial services in a confidential note on the 30th of September 2018 and expressed concerns over its impact on the Indian economy, according to a recent affidavit filed by the Corporate Affairs Ministry. In international news, China, Hong Kong and Singapore are pledging extra fiscal stimulus to counter the economic hit from the coronavirus, which will lead the agenda for the world's top finance officials this week. China said yesterday that it will enact more efficient stimulus measures despite a widening fiscal gap, including lower corporate taxes. Hong Kong's top finance official said that the city is facing tsunami-like shocks that may lead to a record budget deficit. Singapore, meanwhile, is headed for its biggest budget gap in almost two decades, according to analysts. Meanwhile, the US and other nations are ready to fly home hundreds of passengers stuck on a quarantined ship in Japan, but infected travellers are staying behind. The evacuation has sparked fears of contagion spreading as the travellers return home from the cruise ship in Japan and another that is docked in Cambodia. Commenting on the state of affairs in the global economy, the head of the International Monetary Fund has said that the lack of deeper improvements in the global economic system is hindering what's already an anemic outlook for growth, especially as the shock caused by the coronavirus further dims prospects for a pickup this year. In international markets, the three early rises in the Asia-Pacific region have started weak, this after a mixed close on Wall Street on Friday. And with that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Darshan. How are we likely to start the week? Hi, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Global queues are slightly muted at this point of time, and the SGX Nifty is also indicating a negative outlook. As far as earnings are concerned, ONGC, the third quarter numbers were weak. The third quarter miss was driven by lower oil realization and higher OPEX. The volumes were weak. Both oil and gas production declined. 
sale, very strong weak set of numbers. There was a net loss of 430 crores versus a profit of 600 crores. EBITDA was down 61%. Higher raw material cost and reduction in steel prices impacted the company. Strong numbers coming in from Balkrishna Industries. EBITDA up 13%, profit up 48%, and margins improved due to lower raw material cost and lower other expenses. Glenmark results were in line with estimates. The US business was slightly weak, revenues down 6%. But India saw strong double-digit growth. Latin America did well, 50% growth. API revenues also up 10%. Decent numbers coming in from Embassy Office REIT. Uh, the revenues up 14%. Net operating income was up 16%. Weak set of numbers from IRB Infra. Revenues down 3%. Profit down 27%. EBITDA down 6%. And mainly that was on account of drop in the BOT revenues. Muthut Finance, strong set of numbers. Uh, Sun TV also decent set of numbers. There was strong subscription growth even though ad revenues declined. Edelweiss Financial very weak set of numbers. NII down 60%. Profit down 96%. There was an impairment cost uh, which was up 93% and the quarter was muted on account of lower interest income in credit book, elevated credit cost and liquidity management cost. Finolex Cables weak set of numbers. Among the final few companies which will report numbers, uh, First Source Solution and Hutamaki BPL will report numbers. The telecom stocks will be in focus post uh, the verdict that came out on AGR. Bharti Airtel has told the Department of Telecom it will deposit 10,000 crores of AGR dues by February 20 and balance before the next date of hearing. Hero Motocorp has said that the ongoing issue of the coronavirus in China has affected the supply of some of the components to the company's manufacturing facilities in India. Dr. Reddy has said it has received zero observations by the US FDA for its formulation plants in Andhra Pradesh. Rights has emerged as a successful bidder for the supply of locomotive and coaches worth of 680 crores to the Indian Railways. And finally, Sudarshan Chemicals, in which the promoter sold in 10 lakh shares. Access Mutual Fund acquired 7.5 lakh shares of those. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that, log on to our website, bloombergquint.com and click on the All You Need to Know tab and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks, Darshan. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day and an even better week. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy. 